All right, tech family, I've been using the MacBook Pro 14 and 16 extensively since they came out. In fact, when I traveled to Australia over Christmas, the MacBook Pro 14 was the only laptop I took with me. So here are my long-term thoughts and review. Actually, before I do, disclaimer, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you'll know that I am an unbiased reviewer agnostic of brands like Apple, HP, Dell, etc., or operating systems. And for the last couple of years, I've used the Dell XPS 13 as my everyday carry laptop. For a while, for video editing, I used the 2019 MacBook Pro 16. Eventually, I switched to the HP Omen and Legion Slim 7 for video editing as the 2019 MacBook Pro 16 just wasn't powerful enough for me. So I'm not here to sell you on Apple or any other brand, I'm just here to give you an unbiased end user perspective. I'm going to talk about the MacBook Pro 14 first, as my journey to land on this specific unit involved me buying three different ones and returning two of them. Originally, I hoped the MacBook Pro 14 would be my all-round travel laptop. Plenty of grunt to edit videos on the go with, yet portable enough. You see, prior to this laptop, I always traveled with two laptops a lightweight one to have with me at all times, and then a heavier video editing one. None of my lightweight laptops were powerful enough to edit the kind of videos that you're watching right now. So I had to have that bigger laptop back at the accommodation for my video editing work. Because I wanted to consolidate down to one laptop, I ordered a higher spec config of the MacBook Pro 14. One with an M1 Max chip with 24 GPU cores, a two terabyte SSD and 32 gig of RAM. I guessed that the 32 GPU core M1 Max couldn't be properly utilized in this 14 inch form factor due to its limited power delivery and cooling compared with the 16 inch. I ended up being correct on that one, by the way. I knew two terabytes of storage was the right amount for my video editing needs. I only had one terabyte in my older MacBook Pro 16 from 2019, and I was constantly having to clear footage off the laptop, which was very time consuming and annoying. And I ordered 32 gig of RAM as I felt that was the right amount for the video editing I was doing based on monitoring RAM usage in prior laptops. But after owning it for a bit, I noticed that even the M1 Max chip with the lesser 24 core GPU wasn't doing well in the 14 inch form factor. The battery life of the MacBook Pro 14 with this chip was just bad. I fly back and forth from New York to Arizona frequently, which is a five hour flight. It barely could make it through that flight. I posted this issue, by the way, on Twitter, and at least one other well-known YouTuber ended up responding that he had exactly the same issue with the M1 Max chip in the 14-inch form factor. Plus, the laptop got warm to the touch. I know Apple runs their machines as quiet as possible, so they keep fan noise to a minimum, which is at the expense of heat you feel on the chassis and throttling. And yes, I could have installed third-party software to turn on the fans, but I didn't want fan noise, so I returned it and downgraded to the basic M1 Pro processor. Immediately, I noticed better battery life, it no longer got warm to the touch at all under any task, and there was no fan noise. A win. After I made that change, the laptop was fantastic. It was portable enough, which surprised me. At 3.5 pounds, I originally thought it would just be too heavy to be an everyday carry laptop. But you see, before this one, as I said, I was using the Dell XPS 13 inch, which is substantially lighter. I thought I'd noticed the extra weight, but I honestly didn't. It was totally manageable. The screen is gorgeous. It's the right size, aspect ratio, and resolution that I feel like I can just see plenty of content on it and get real work done. Special call out, by the way, to those who program or write a lot of documents. You are really going to benefit from this laptop as it just has so much vertical real estate. Plus, for the first time since 2015, the keyboards on the MacBook Pros are actually good. The high quality webcam and great speakers just add to how much of a joy it is to use. And having a reasonably fast SD card reader and additional ports is very convenient. Even the notch, which I thought would be an issue, it just kind of blended into the background after a while. Now, that doesn't mean I like it, I don't. And particularly on Mac OS, where the icons in the menu bar have important functionality. And having this ridiculously large notch means there is less room for them, especially on the 14 inch. But as I said, at the end of the day, I didn't find it to be an issue in my use of this laptop. But the very best thing about this laptop, where it truly shines, is feeling no heat or fan noise while using it. It is seriously a joy to use. Apple have done a phenomenal job with their M1 chips. Going back to using a PC laptop after this and hearing fan noise and feeling a hot or warm chassis just feels dated in comparison, like I'm traveling back through time to a prior generation of laptop.
Seriously, no matter what I did on this laptop, it ran smoothly and without issue. Even editing my multi-camera, multi-effect 4K videos for this very YouTube channel. The one thing I will say is when rendering videos, I definitely notice this laptop, the M1 Pro version, taking twice as long to complete a render when compared to my 14-inch model with the M1 Max CPU. That makes sense, as it has half the rendering hardware. So why did I return it and buy a third? It's to do with the spacebar. On the 14-inch model, my left thumb sometimes gets caught as it moves between the left command key and the spacebar. You see, the keys aren't rounded vertically on the edges, so when my thumb moves between the two over the gap, it can get a little caught. More so at certain angles, by the way, like when typing on the laptop while lying down. I found it distracting, to be honest, so I took the laptop to an Apple store, and after showing it to the store manager, she said others had mentioned this issue. So I ordered a third one to see if it would occur on that unit. Exact same config, by the way. This new one, which I have right here, still has the issue, but it's ever so slightly less apparent, so I decided to keep it. Note, due to the larger body of the MacBook Pro 16, and therefore where my hands sit on that laptop, I don't notice the issue there. Speaking of the MacBook Pro 16, I love it. The larger screen size makes it the perfect workstation laptop. Also, I had none of the issues I had with the M1 Max CPU in it like I had with the 14-inch model. It didn't run warm to the touch and it had excellent battery life. Also, I was originally worried that the increase in thickness and weight over the 2019 MacBook Pro 16 would be a problem for me. But again, it just wasn't. Yes, it would be nice to have that slimmer, lighter form factor. But when doing power user tasks, I'd take the trade-off of increased thickness and weight, overhearing fan noise and feeling heat. Not everything was entirely perfect on these machines though. Firstly, many apps are still just not working perfectly on the M1 architecture. For example, Dropbox frequently doesn't sync when I wake the laptop after sleeping. I have to close it and then reopen it. Secondly, I really feel like Apple should have put the much faster Wi-Fi 6E in these laptops. These laptops are perfect video editing machines, but getting the large amount of data you need to and from them can take time. Yes, they do support Wi-Fi 6, which is good, but as you'll see in my video on Wi-Fi 6E, which I'll link below, that is substantially slower than the newer Wi-Fi 6E with that 6 gigahertz band. Also, the card reader is UHS-2, not the faster UHS-3, so you're really faced with a choice. Wait to get footage onto the laptop, or plug it into a storage device or network. Look, I'm going to wrap here. Over the past couple of months, these MacBook Pro laptops have been so good, they have pretty much completely replaced the Windows laptops that I was using before them. The MacBook Pro 14 has become my everyday carry. It has a more useful, larger screen than the XPS 13 I was using before it. It is fully capable of editing videos on the go, which is just awesome. And it doesn't get warm to the touch or have annoying fan noise. For my workstation laptop, the MacBook Pro 16 is far more powerful for my video editing needs than any laptop I have ever used before. It runs dead quiet and cool to the touch, which is just amazing. I have even switched my gaming sessions playing League of Legends Teamfight Tactics from PC to one of these Macs. Seriously, I never thought I would do that before. Look. I do sometimes still prefer using a PC, obviously for more intensive AAA gaming and when using a laptop in a desktop form factor, i.e. plugged into a monitor, keyboard and mouse. I just personally don't like how macOS renders on an external display. Plus, some applications like Excel still work better on a Windows PC. But just calling a spade a spade, Apple really raised the bar with these laptops. When I start receiving high-end Windows laptops for 2022, they better be a substantial improvement over their prior generation, particularly when it comes to fan noise, heat generation, speakers, and webcams. Otherwise, honestly, it's really gonna be hard to recommend them over one of these Macs. Well, that's all for today, folks. If you like this video, you know what to do. Smash that like button and get subscribed. Not only does it show your appreciation for the insane amount of work that goes into making these, but as I always say, it makes my mother very proud. Make sure to follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. Links below. Speaking of TikTok, by the way, I'm gonna start posting quick mini reviews there. Oh, and if you are feeling generous, become a Patreon supporter. Honestly, it really does help keep this channel stay independent, free of sponsors, and with as minimal advertisements as possible. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day, and I will catch you later.